Good morning, and welcome to worship at Anderson and Stella United Methodist Churches. You've made it. You've made it through the week. It's Sunday, and we're glad you're here. Some of us have had really busy weeks. Some of us have had weeks that uh, were just full of uh, joy and excitement, good news. Uh, and some of us have, are just glad to have survived the week. But however your week has been, and however your upcoming week looks to you, I invite you to take a moment to rest, to reflect, to, to praise God and glorify God as we spend this time together. And let us begin doing that by singing our opening hymn, which is Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. I invite you to join me. concerns, all those things that are going on um, in, our, in our life, in our church, and in our communities. As with every week, there are always many things for which to give thanks to God. This week, uh, we've received news that in some places, the curve of COVID-19 has begun to flatten. That is certainly a joy. And we give thanks for all the folks and all the people that uh, God has, has equipped to help with that effort. We also praise God and give thanks for the food pantry ministry uh, that we have outside of the Anderson Church and for the generosity and, and the utilization of that. We also have another personal joy to lift up this day. Uh, many of you, and especially when I'm standing right in front of her, don't get to see Megan on, on Sunday morning too often anymore. And uh, we have reached a significant marker. Megan has reached 30 weeks. We're expecting our first son, William, in July. So Megan, would you stand up and show off your 30-week tummy? We're getting close, folks. We're excited. And Megan looks beautiful. And William looks cute too. Right? Right. That's right. And we also have another bit of just wonderful news that we heard this week, um, or this past week. Uh, the good news of Sage and Eli from Stella. Uh, they are now engaged to be married. So we, we, we give... So much praise and thanks for that good news. Uh, praise God and congratulations, guys. We are so happy for you. And, uh, and we can't wait for that time when we can congratulate you in person. Uh, we also are, are gratified that, um, that we are able to come to God and lift up folks in our, in our faith family that are in need of God's help. So we add Pam Vershaw, Kelsey Renner, and Gwen Wright to our prayer list. We also continue to pray for God's help in the healing of the COVID-19 and for guidance and peace that passes understanding for those 
that faced those difficult and sometimes seemingly impossible decisions. I also invite you to lift up those concerns and those, those praises where you are and to share them as you feel led as we enter into this time of prayer. Let us begin with a moment of silent prayer as we make our own personal confessions and entreaties to God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God. Thank you for walking with us through this week. For the blessing of each person that is worshiping with us today. This week certainly has been a mixture of the wonderful and the sorrowful. For those moments of hope and promise and for those victories of joy, we give you thanks for how we are able to see your working and moving and your presence amongst us. For those moments of difficulty and challenge, we give you thanks for your presence in the midst of them. We are humbled by your sustaining presence and by the invitation of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now in this time of worship, uh, it's the time when I invite those who are supporting the ministries of this church to send in their tithes and their offerings. Uh, the P.O. box is in the text box below if you are so led. But I also invite all of us, if you are visitors, I welcome you. I'm grateful that you are here. And if you are uh, our, our longtime ongoing members, I'm grateful that you are here. I invite us all to lift up the many churches of God, the many followers of God, and the ministries of those churches as we pray together. Generous and loving God, bless these offerings to be impactful in the extending of your grace and good news of Jesus Christ and the building up of your kingdom. God, we just, we ask and we pray that no one might consider themselves a stranger to you, a stranger from your love and your mercy. May all find their place that you have already prepared for them at your table. We long for this and seek to be a part of this great work. Through Jesus Christ, amen. Now I would like to invite the young disciples to direct their attention to the screen. And uh, I've, got, I've got a question for you. I'm going to get a little bit closer. Do you guys know what this is? Let me hold it a little bit closer. Do you know what these are? I used to wear a pair of these all the time. They're glasses. Why do we wear glasses? Do I look stylish? Do I look stylish? What do you think, Megan? Is it me? No, it's not. They're her glasses. But we wear glasses so we can see, right? And, uh, and you may wear glasses or you may know someone that wears glasses. And what happens if they're not wearing their glasses when they probably should be? So some people wear glasses so they can see things close up. And some people see, wear glasses so they can see things far away. When I wore glasses, I wore bifocals, which did kind of both. And uh, if, if you're the one kind, there might be something that other people can see far away, but you can't. 
and you put your glasses on and all of a sudden you're aware, you can see it, right? Other people, you can put a picture right in front of their face and they can't see it. It's right there, but they can't see it. They need to put their glasses on and it gives them what we hope is called 2020 vision, which means basically they can see the way that, that the world is set up for. And uh, have you ever, whether you wear glasses or not, been standing somewhere and just totally missed what was going on? Maybe you weren't wearing your glasses, you couldn't see it, or maybe you were just preoccupied looking at something else. Well, that's what our story is about today. It's about a couple of guys who are right there next to Jesus and they don't even notice it. Can you imagine standing right next to Jesus and not even seeing it? I know it sounds strange, but it happens sometimes. Now, I hope all of you have 20-20 vision so that you can see whenever Jesus is nearby and you can appreciate it and, and you, can, you can enjoy God's company. So let's pray that we might all be able to, to see and to know when God is near. Let's bow our heads. Gracious and loving God, I give thanks for all of these kids, all of these young disciples that, that are here in your presence. And we ask that you would give them a clarity of vision that they might always know when you are nearby. And that they might follow your direction and go where you lead and be so blessed to be with you all the time. And all God's kids said, Amen. Thank you for letting me use these today, Megan. And I would like to uh, share with you that story that I was telling you a little bit about. It comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Now on the same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who has not, does not know the things that have happened in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and the rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since this has taken place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb this morning but did not find the body. They came and told us that they had seen vision of an angel who said he was still alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. They did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are! And how slow to believe all the prophets have spoken. Did, did not the Messiah have to suffer these things as then, and then enter glory? In the beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as though he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. 
So he went to stay with them. Then, when he was at their table, he took the bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while we talked, while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Have you ever missed seeing Jesus? I wonder how often we are like the two on the road, where Jesus is right there and we're not seeing him. I mean, it's understandable. They had had a lot go on in their lives. The man that they had followed, the man that they had hoped to redeem Israel, had been not only taken from them, but crucified. Crucified by the religious leaders, crucified by the political leaders, and crucified as a result of the mob, the people. And I, I kind of wonder what their discussion, what their conversation was like on the road to Emmaus. I wonder if the reason they were leaving, I mean, for one thing we know for a fact, their response to all this, they left. They, they were leaving town. And I wonder if they're like us, many of us, in times of crisis, we go home. Sometimes figuratively, sometimes literally. We return to what is familiar, whether it's appropriate or not. We go back to what's ingrained in us, what is, uh, what is hardwired. And these two were leaving to go to Emmaus. And if they're also like us, I wonder if they were arguing about where it all went wrong, whose fault it was. Now they'd heard some stories from the women, but Jesus wasn't there. His body wasn't there. And the news sounded good, but also hard to believe. I've had moments in life where I've been in a place where I feel, felt like I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. I didn't, my plans for where I was headed had been derailed and, and I, did, I was at a loss. I was confused, I was anxious. Many people right now are posting senior pictures online in solidarity to the seniors that are graduating this year who may not get graduations or proms. And uh, I remember when I was graduating, that was one of those moments when everything I was used to, the routine that I was used to was upset. And while I had a plan of sorts, I really didn't know where I was supposed to be going or what I was supposed to be doing. A few years later, I remember my dad ended up in the hospital and uh, I thought he had had a heart attack. And uh, very much the same feelings came back where I knew I wanted to be doing something. I needed to help, but I just didn't know how or what to do. And it was driving me nuts. And then a few years after that, I remember when a relationship that I didn't think was going to end, ended. And my future plans were in disarray. And in all those three instances, if Jesus had been standing right next to me, I might not have seen him.
So I have a little bit of compassion for these two, who when they're walking along are just trying to make sense of things and they don't recognize Jesus as the person that is with them, the stranger that comes up. And what does Jesus do? Well, in the middle of it, they just start pouring out everything that has gone on in their lives, assuming he doesn't know. And Jesus doesn't say, well, I know all this. I mean, of course he does. It happened to him. Instead, he lets them. He lets them pour out their hearts and, and vent and share. And then he begins to talk over the scripture with them. Talking about who Jesus is and how Jesus fulfills the words of the prophets and why what happened to Jesus happened. Still, they don't recognize him. It's only later, after they break bread, that, that suddenly their eyes are open and they see, hindsight being 2020, they see who this man was, what all of his words meant. It all falls into perspective. If you had those moments where hindsight is 2020 and, and the things that were so confusing before suddenly fall into place, in each of those three circumstances I shared with you, I had that. As I look back now, graduation, while it was a very um, stressful time, to say the least. It falls into a place within the grander scheme of my life. Things I learned and experienced there bless me and have blessed me and been useful to God later on. My dad had an acute case of heartburn. I didn't really need to be so worried and stressed out as I was. Looking back, it seemed silly. And that relationship that ended, ended. And it changed the course that my life was going. And I look back and I see the lessons I have learned and the blessing that that change was because that end made the way for a new beginning. Here, we see something similar, where the revelation of Christ makes way, the, the preparation that Christ had done with the disciples makes a way for what comes next. I wonder how many of us right now are anxious and uncertain about what is coming next. Not sure quite what to do, what's right, what's appropriate, what's good. I think one of the things that is most comforting about this scripture right now for me is that even though the disciples didn't realize Jesus was there, he was there with them. We're not always aware when Jesus is walking right next to us but we don't have to feel it for him to be there. And another good lesson from this scripture it comes about, uh, about how we can feel close to Jesus because they did feel close to Jesus at one point. And you might ask yourself, well, when did that happen? And the obvious answer is when they broke bread. Oh yes, that's, that's the answer. They broke bread and suddenly they realized that Jesus was there. But something very important happened just before they broke bread. Can you remember what it was? They're walking along and they reach their destination and Jesus is going to keep going. He's going to keep going. And what do they do? They invite him to stay. They extend hospitality to who? A stranger. So we read scripture, we see over and over again, if you do this for the least of these, you do this for me. 
when we extend grace and hospitality, when we tend to the sick and the lame and the hurting, when we share our meal with the stranger, we are close to God. I think, I know, that when I want to feel close to God, that all I need to do to feel it is to love on my neighbor and to love on my neighbor that needs it. And right now, there are ample opportunities to love on our neighbors. There's plenty to pray for, to care for. God is close by. God is with us. And for that, I am truly grateful. I invite you to join me in a moment of prayer. Gracious and loving God, as we walk along on this road, as we experience this uncertainty and and confusion because life is not turning out the way we expected, because events are unfolding in a way that, that we did not anticipate. God, we pray that you would be with us and that we would have that assurance of knowing that whether or not we see you, that you are there walking, speaking words of wisdom and comfort, and, and speaking words that challenge us to see you and to be near you. Place in our hearts that perfect love and compassion that drives us to extend hospitality to all of our neighbors so that in every circumstance we might be serving and loving you our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now I invite you to join with me in singing our closing hymn, Open My Eyes That I May See. is near. And may we have the resources, the will, and the heart to love the least of these as we glorify God. Go now and do so, accompanied by forever the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.